Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for another project. Now I recently made this big black and gold dressing gown slash costume slash gown here. Depends on how I wear it. Mostly I'll probably be wearing this as a dressing gown around the house because this hem would just get so dirty if I wore it out and about. Hence why I mentioned in that video I wanted to create a more day wear friendly version, a slightly more wearable version of this design because I really did like this wrap style but I wanted to make something perhaps in a black linen rayon blend that would be much more wearable in my wardrobe. But to do so I did need to draft a whole new sleeve to go onto this pattern and make a few other tiny modifications. So let's jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom and get started. I'm going to pull out some alphanumeric paper here and of course I have done a little quick sketch to keep myself on track. Here's my pattern from the Fortuny underdress that you saw me make in this video that I can link up into a card here where I made the original black and gold version out of of course yes sheer curtain fabric. I'm just going to go over this real fast and make sure that nothing needs to be taped down or fixed making sure my shoulder seam still matches up things like that. Shoulder seam. It's hard to say if you talk as fast as I do which we all know. I talk very fast. I get <laughs> comments about it all the time. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and draft a whole new skirt for this. And by skirt, I mean, we're not doing this as a gown today. I'm doing this as a top. So I just need a little bit of a peplum, a below the waist extension of this. So I'm going to use my regular basic block skirt pattern for that. I'm just using the front of that, lining it up along the center front and closing my darts to turn this into an A-line shape. I could have also just traced my A-line skirt pattern, but I didn't want to get it out of its Ziploc baggie where it lives. So I just use my basic pencil skirt, my basic block skirt, in order to draft that, I am going to extend this or mirror part of this along the center front as well. Good four or five inches here, just so I can extend it the same amount as I have the center front bodice piece here. I'm just going to line that up along the waistline where it will be sewn together later and mark how far that needs to come onto this other side here. And I couldn't decide if I wanted to continue the angle of the top or go to a different angle. Uh, I just ended up making this kind of come straight down from the waist. So instead of continuing the angled line, of the princess seam from the piece above, it is just gonna come down straight and straighten off here below the waist. I'm gonna make this around six or seven inches long and then I did have it dip down a little bit further here in the front. That's how I have it on my sketch. If you can see in the bottom little right hand corner there, you can see my sketch has this dipping down just a little bit. And I, in the end, decided to actually round this off, but you'll see that later on. Uh, I didn't make that decision quite yet in the process here, but I'll go ahead and cut this front peplum piece out here. I use peplum uh, just because it's like a piece that's short-ish from the waist down, but really uh, I don't consider this a peplum. I think a peplum has to be flared or gathered to count as a peplum, in my weird opinion. I don't think that's the official definition, but in my brain, something is not actually, if it's something is fitted, like the lower half of a jacket or a top like this, I don't consider that a peplum. But if it has flare, like if it's circle cut, flounced, or gathered, then it becomes a peplum in my mind. That could be just because my mind works in mysterious ways. That's right. But I'm going to be using the same exact technique here, using my pencil skirt back, my block skirt back here. Again, putting my awl in the dart point and closing my darts. If you've never seen me do this before, you can see me do this and explain it a little bit slower in my A-line skirt video. I can actually go ahead and put a card up to that A-line skirt video here because I know it does look a little bit like magic and it's hard to see exactly what I'm doing. But I promise I'm just closing the waist darts and opening that flare up into the hem, which in this case is very short because again, this is just the extension for my top here. You can see along the side seam here, I just used the front piece as a guide to make sure that this was the exact same length and the exact same tiny bit amount of flare because I did add a tiny bit of flare along the hip line there um, towards the hem. So basically nothing, not much at all. And the back of this will be cut on the center back, back peplum 2023, just labeling that a little bit. Square off a line here on some alphanumeric paper to draw in my sleeve. Again, I'm just taking a tracing of my basic block sleeve pattern. Again, I can put a card to that, but now we are all out of cards dang it, where I make my basic sleeve pattern like this. This does have an elbow dart in the back, which I will be keeping for today. And I'm actually going to split the sleeve down the middle today and then narrow it from the elbow down, which I haven't done before. And I'm sure there's a pattern drafting uh, like formula for doing so, for narrowing the sleeve. But I just cut this out of muslin and pinned it onto my arm until I thought I had enough ease taken out that I could still maintain mobility, but had this uh, much narrower sleeve than my standard, I suppose. And because I knew I wanted to have lacing and close the sleeve from the elbow to the wrist, down the center here, I went ahead and added seam allowance down the center of my sleeve because I will need to sew it back together. Uh, we'll fold the elbow up to the sleeve cap, I will, but from the elbow down, I will leave it open, but I'll need seam allowance to finish all those edges and to be able to sew it back together again. So just adding seam allowance along that, taping it down along the back so that things don't get caught on anything and get ripped. That's why you see me use a lot of tape. I go through a lot of scotch tape here in the sewing room. Uh, scotch tape is actually kind of a weird type of plastic. It's not straight up just plastic. Um, although again, if you feel really bad about using plastic tape, 
Uh, it's actually cellulose plastic. I think it's kind of weird. Um, so it might be a little bit more biodegradable than usual. Um, but you could also use masking tape or washi tape in your sewing if you were more concerned about having a biodegradable tape, I suppose. But alas, as I've said before, I am a bit of a effy trinket from Hunger Games in the sense that I'm aware that I, I live in the capital and dress extravagantly and I use tape extravagantly as well and it's not really good for the planet but I also don't have a lot of hope for the planet so I guess I'm not an Effie trinket because at least Effie is a revolutionary in the end and I'm, I fear I am not but in many ways I do wish I were more of a revolutionary so well, we'll leave it as an aspiration I know I haven't seen the new Hunger Games stuff and I, ha I don't really have a desire to actually anyhow slim sleeve 2023 front and back I'm just leaving the elbow dart right where it was like so, for now, I'm going to cut this out of muslin, sew it up, and see exactly what changes I need to make by pinning it onto my arm. But I do know that I want puff up here, so even though I've already cut the sleeve apart, I'm going to go ahead and add some puff to the top of this sleeve. And you've probably seen me add puff to sleeves before, and honestly, it's going to be more coherent in older videos. I'll try and find a good one, and in the description I will link good video for adding puff to sleeves, and you can click on that because this is uh, confusing enough to explain when I'm not doing it on a split sleeve, so... I'll just uh, leave you with past me instead of current me on this one because eh, I do still need to make a video all about puff sleeves. Um, it's just something that uh, seems rather intuitive and natural to me. Um, I know that's not going to be the case obviously for everyone because obviously a lot of um, pattern drafting comes quite naturally and intuitive to me. Um, it's just my, it's my one weird skill, you know, um, but I need to make a video, I know, so that other people can understand puff sleeves the way my brain does because you can add puff, of course, all along the sleeve, just at the cuff or just at the uh, shoulder. So we'll get into it sometime. I need to put that video together. It's just uh, fundamentals are always a little bit less fun for me uh, because it's, you know, like going back to school in some ways, as opposed to doing something creative and new. Teaching the fundamentals is something that I uh, need to do more of and yet is a struggle to force myself into because I've always got new and exciting uh, like garment ideas that I want to work on instead of doing my fundamentals. But I know you want to learn all the things, and I definitely need to teach them to you. So we'll get to it someday, hopefully next year. But now that I've added a tiny bit of puff to my sleeve here, just to give it a little bit of a strong shoulder, I again will cut this out of muslin and try this on. And then I just pinned it and started editing, 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 editing this pattern right on my body. I held this up to my body. I held the sleeve onto my arm and started playing with it, seeing how much shorter I wanted to make it, seeing how far exactly I wanted this elbow slit along the center of my sleeve to come up. And then I can go ahead and remove everything and transfer all those changes onto the paper pattern as well. So remember when doing a mock-up like this to use a large stitch length so it's easier to remove the stitching later. So I've taken that apart and I'm laying my front on top of my front here. You can see where I've narrowed it. I'm going to use my tracing wheel and just use my colored pencils and my ruler to go ahead and transfer all the changes that I made on my fabric version onto this paper pattern so that I can have my slightly narrowed sleeve here. Again, there probably is an official way to narrow a sleeve. Uh, but you know what? Eh. Sometimes it's just easier than finding the exact instructions I needed in all my many books and on the internet, etc. Sometimes it's just easier to cut a muslin out and pin it on your body and uh, wing it that way. I wanted to do some lace-up sleeves, and I was inspired to put the lacing down the center of the back of the elbow like this by this dress that Rhaenyra wears in uh, House of the Dragon, which I finally watched recently. I know I'm way behind on having watched that show finally, and I still actually haven't watched the last episode. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't hold the attention uh, the way that Game of Thrones perhaps used to, but some of the costumes are indeed very pretty. So I don't think there's anyone who like loved the end seasons of Game of Thrones, is there? If so, good for you. I don't actually typically like fantasy shows. I know that's probably a slight surprise. Um, I, fantasy I have a hard time with because I have a hard time with magic. Uh, magic systems have to be very particular for me to not be irritated by them. I don't mind the magic in Avatar The Last Airbender slash Korra. That's fine with me for some reason. That one doesn't bother me. Um, and like, I used to love Lord of the Rings when I was a kid. Um, and that's a pretty subtle or like nebulous magic. Uh, it's not like everyone can like deus ex mac into the situation all the time. I don't know. So I, a lot of fantasy things don't really work for me because uh, I'm weird in particular about them. But now that I've transferred over my changes to my sleeve pattern, it is ready to go. I did actually add a quarter inch along the side seam for my front and back pieces for this just because this is going to turn out a little bit more like a jacket in the end, I was realizing this the weight of this fabric, it's not truly a blouse weight. This is a linen rayon blend from Joann's, by the way. I've had it a long time. In fact, the skirt that I wear with this at the end of the video is the exact same fabric, but I think they changed it just a tiny bit and mine has faded over the years because that skirt, 
I made out of this fabric a long time ago has been washed several times and uh, therefore is slightly faded compared to this new blouse I'm making today. But what I'm doing here is using my side front to just draft a small uh, underside front extension to go on the opposite side of my wrap front because this garment wraps in the front but only the center front panels overlap uh, entirely and I wanted to have that extend into the side seam on the underside of my wrap here so hopefully you'll see that in the end what that means here. So this piece is going to go like so, so that this will, the front will extend all the way to the side seam and I can hook it underneath. Won't be seen in the end, but it's just a practical uh, security sort of thing in there to have this wrap all the way to the side seam on that side. But I can then lay everything out on my fabric here, cut everything. Everything is mostly lined up along the straight grain, which is true of most of my sewing, honestly. I don't use a lot of bias cutting in my sewing. It's not something I'm very well trained in. And it's not something that actually comes into play in the styles that I prefer very often. So being a master of bias cutting is really good if you are very into 20s, 30s, and like slinkier styles, but those aren't the styles I prefer on myself anyhow. So it doesn't really matter that that is a gap in my knowledge. Of course, one day I'd like to play around and fill in those gaps a little bit more, but it's not actually necessary for most of the things that I want to make. But I'm just transferring my darts onto my sleeves or my elbow darts and then also the back piece here and just transferring over any notches or markings that I need. I'll pin the side seams of my peplum pieces for the front and backs as well and then yes put my notches in for the princess seams along the front princess seams of the center front piece and the side front pieces here just using pins to mark those. I did cut all of this out twice using the exact same fabric so this will be self-lined in the exact same fabric which is what gave it a little bit of bulk in the end. Um, if I had like a black cotton wall in stock or a lighter weight linen, I would have used that, but eh, I was just using what I had in my sewing room. I will just sew my darts as usual, starting at the large end of the dart, sewing off the tip and then tying the two threads closed at the tip. That's just how I learned to do darts, as I always say, and how I keep doing them, as I always say. And yes, my little side seams for my pebble pieces while we're here. Slightly curved because it's a slightly A-line skirt shape, I guess. Maybe we can call this a skirt. A very short skirt. A scandalous skirt. And I will press those open over my tailor's hand because there is that slight curve in there. Too slight to need to uh, clip this curve, by the way. No need on something this slight in a looser weave fabric like this. This fabric actually, compared to like the cotton sateens I prefer using all the time, is actually a bit of a looser weave which means that uh, technically if you were doing this as a beginner sewer, you might want to, or someone who takes like a long time with their sewing, as in like over, uh, do it, does it over days as opposed to all in one or two days like I do, um, this fabric might creep a little bit and stretch a little bit on you because it is a um, looser weave. So you'd want to do stay stitching, which is something you just never see me use, but is often recommended in commercial patterns. But because I usually make things like within 48 hours uh, from start to finish, I don't usually bother with stay stitching. Um, I don't give things time to stretch much on me, and I don't use a lot of loosely woven fabric. Sometimes I do wonder what flight path I am under because I record these voiceovers and suddenly notice just how many planes go by every day. Can you not, please? And here I am lining up that front princess seam here. So lining up my center front piece on top of my side front piece. The side front piece is the curvier piece, center front straighter. And I just like to pin where my notches are first and then pin like the uh, shoulder seam and the waist area and then pin in between. So notches first, ends, and then pin in between and make sure everything is adjusted to fit. We know that the pattern um, is correct, or if you've checked your pattern along the way, you know that it's correct. So if your fabric has stretched or warped at all, you can kind of mitigate that uh, during the pinning stage here, just by pinning and repinning until everything fits down without bunching or stretching too much, basically. Again, more of a problem when you have a fabric that is in a looser weave that uh, wiggles around on you. And something like a cotton sateen instead. No problem. Which this is actually very similar, this design I realized, is actually quite similar to my Luke Skywalker inspired dress from many years ago. Um, so I can link that actually in the description as well. Just giving myself, my future self, more work to remember to put all these things in the description. Uh, but this uh, style is actually very similar to that. In fact, it's more like Luke Skywalker's jacket than that dress is probably, just without the different color lining. But that one is made out of cotton sateen. So if you'd like to see me make a similar design to this, again, check out that video from several years ago. I actually am still very happy with that dress. It feels very chic and like very subtly nerdy. But once I have those princess seams sewn, I of course will clip over my curves over the bust and then press that seam allowance open over here on the ironing board. And then I'll actually go ahead and run these back through the machine and do top stitching on either side of the seam to make sure my seam allowance stays 
open and flat and smooth like that. And I just wanted to make sure that I put my little extensions for the wrap on the correct side of this. So I was kind of like holding this up to my body and making sure I knew what I was doing to make sure that this was going in the right spot. It gets sewn to the front piece here. It's the underlap of the wrap. So it's the underside, the left side of the wrap top that needs to extend all the way to my right side seam of my body. So I was holding things up to my body just to make sure that I don't get confused because it's very easy to get confused. So while I'm sewing the extension onto the other side, I will go ahead and sew the shoulder seam and side seam of the other front piece to my back piece. Just batch processing as I like to do. And then I have one of my sleeves here with its elbow dart in place and sewn shut and ironed and all that stuff, ready to go. I'll just mark using my pattern here where I wanted to sew that down to, right above the elbow. And I can sew this sleeve shut from there up on both of these. Now you see me making two sleeves here, but I actually indeed did make four sleeves because again, I was self-lining all of this. So I basically did everything once and then did it all again. So all these same steps I repeated for the self-lining, but seeing as it's the exact same fabric and the exact same process, I'm not gonna bother to show you it twice. Uh, same idea both times, you know. I am still using my Gooderman all-purpose thread over here on the 99K, 12 stitches per inch, half inch seam allowance, all my usual stuff over here on the machine. And yes, if you are new around here, this is a Singer 99K machine from 1955. I grabbed her off Craigslist and I highly recommend an old cast iron Singer, either the 221, the 99, or the 66 perhaps. Uh, various older machines like this. Um, in the 50s, they are electrified and have backstitching, and really you don't need more than that, honestly. Um, it's very easy to find parts for them, and I find that they are much more reliable. So if you're in the market for a quote-unquote new machine, allow me to evangelize about the cast iron singers, because I didn't understand that it was actually more pleasurable to use and easier to fix. So there is a huge difference compared to when I used to use like an old plastic brother machine. No, no, I'm never going back now that I uh, understand. But just press open everything I just sewed, of course. Pressing and ironing is a huge part of sewing and very important for a nice result. And honestly, just for things to go together nicely. So ironing is quite essential so that things line up where you want them to. Especially ironing this rayon linen blend, no problem. Because while linen does wrinkle quite easily, uh, the rayon helps with that a little bit here. And also it does press very crisply, which is nice. And you can turn your iron all the way up. Although with this, because of the rayon in it, you don't, I like keep it at a cotton setting because I don't want to scorch the rayon content in this. But with the bodice and the peplum both assembled at this point, I can go ahead and attach them at the waist. So I'm just gonna line this buddy up along the waist, uh, matching up the side seams and then the other seams as I go. And the little extension on that side, that little waist extension will stick out past my peplum because my peplum doesn't go all the way to the side seam. It just uh, overlaps the same amount as my dress did on the last project where I was using this pattern-ish. I mean, I was using parts of this pattern. You know what I mean. I'll go ahead and stitch that over here on the machine as well. This again is uh, subtly curved enough, this waist seam, that in this fabric I didn't feel the need to clip this, um, but I will of course press it open. And while I'm here, I'm gonna sew the underarm seams of my sleeves as well. And while I press open the underarm seam of my sleeve here, I will just note that I sewed this after doing the center seam on the other side where the elbow split is and everything, because I wanted to be able to again, top stitch that seam while everything was flat and then I could go ahead and sew these underarm seams and press them open like so. But as this is now a tube, it would be very difficult to top stitch this underarm seam. So I wanted to prioritize where my top stitching ended up on the sleeves and I wanted that to be in the outside where the uh, other detailing will be going on. And I'm just pressing open that waist seam for the rest of the garment like so. Give that a little bit of steam, use my hands as a clapper as usual. And I'm actually going to even top stitch this waist seam just to help keep that open and smooth. Again, this fabric is a little bit on the bulkier side compared to what I use normally. It's just not as smooth of a finish. So I just wanted to make sure that things were gonna lay down the way I wanted. And also when working with something like, that I consider more of a day wear fabric, I guess, like a linen, um, I never mind doing a lot of top stitching to give it a more of a sportswear kind of look in some ways. Um, not that everything needs to be a chino, but 
I don't think top stitching is out of the question on day wear in general. And I will actually start working on my collar this time. I drafted this collar as part of making the other pattern, but if you remember, I never actually remember to add the collar to that gown, sadly enough. So today I will remember to add it onto this top version, thankfully. So I'm just interfacing one side of that with some lightweight fusible interfacing in a black color, just because again, this fabric is a looser bit of a weave, which means it's a bit transparent. So I didn't want to use a white interfacing in there because it would slightly show through and give it a kind of cloudy look. So I made sure to find some black toned interfacing in order to give this just a tiny bit more structure up here at the collar. And I will stitch around the top and corners of that, clip my corners and curves and turn this right side out. And then I'm not going to do under stitching on this collar because I will again be top stitching it just because I have top stitching going on on other areas of the garment. I felt I could get away with top stitching instead of under stitching for this as well. Again, not that unusual for me. Anytime I know I'm going to be top stitching, I don't usually bother under stitching. At some point that is just kind of almost wasting thread, right? Sure. Who knows? Anything to justify my slight laziness in life. Or as some would say, <clears throat> my expertise in knowing when and where to not use under stitching, which is just years of experience and slight laziness coming into play. And these do still have their puff in the sleeve. So now that my sleeves are otherwise assembled, I need to put in my gathering stitching along the sleeve caps on the top. And yes, you can see here's another sleeve out of nowhere because I do have to do all of that over again for the sleeve lining. But before I could bother with the lining, I do have to finish this first layer by setting my sleeves into the garment itself. I'll match up my underarm seam with my side seam and match up the uh, center seam of my sleeve with the shoulder seam at the top. Then I'm going to pin all the way up until I get about an inch and a half, two inches away from the shoulder seam. And then I'll gather any of that excess down. Of course, this excess was built into the pattern as puff. So it's supposed to be puffed up here, concentrated around the uh, top of the shoulder at the shoulder seam, of course. Same on the other side pin it smooth up towards the top and then gather down to fit. Set that in over here on the machine. Again, you see me sewing over my pins here. Sometimes I'm remembering to be good and remove them because I know it bothers several people, several dozen people. Um, but then sometimes I just revert to my, my own ways, which is just to sew over them, especially in fabric like this that doesn't mind. Sometimes I will work with metallic or more sensitive fabrics. And then I've learned that it is best to remove my pins because if the needle does hit a pin in the case of this machine, it has no trouble just pushing the pin aside, but it will dull the needle after a while. So that's why I change my needles out. You know, we all have our own process. This is mine. I know it bothers a lot of people, but life is short. One sleeve set in, time to set in the other one, and then I will go ahead and sew on my collar around the neckline here. Just set that out smooth here. Of course, this is a rather curved neckline to a rather straight collar, but it's no trouble in the end. Just give it a little wiggle. I uh, have pins here on the center front bodice pieces to show where this is supposed to line up at the center front neckline. And then, of course, I pinned the back of the neck at the center back of the collar and uh, bodice as well, just to help get this into place and know where this is supposed to go. And I'll pin all around this curve, trying not to get anything extra stuck in here, any tucks along my neckline. I am going to just sew both layers of this collar in here because in the end it will be sandwiched between this outer layer of my garment and the lining that I'm going to set in here as a bag lining in a minute anyhow. So might as well just base that on there like so. And this is one curve in the end that I will have to clip on this just because the neckline curve is quite acute, quite sharp, I suppose, around the uh, neck which is a smallish cylinder compared to other parts of the body, perhaps. And so I will have to put clips in here in the end, but that's after I go ahead and bag line this. So I'm going to line up this other layer here, right sides together. Here's one I prepared earlier, you know, my whole lining again, doing the exact same steps. Only this one doesn't have its own collar. We don't need two collars. That'd be excessive. Although if you made them a different size and had it be like a layered thing, why the heck not? But I'll line this up all along the neckline, pin that in place all along the front. Uh, what will eventually be the overlaps and underlaps of the wrap there. Uh, the other side has that little extension sticking out, and I'm actually going to leave that as the gap to turn this right side out. But otherwise, I'm sewing all the way around the edges of this. Right sides together, half inch seam allowance. Then I will clip my corners and curves and flip it right side out, which is basically what bag lining is. Um, 
It's just called that when you line the whole garment this way, right sides together, as opposed to say like flat lining, for example, or um, other methods of lining things. I would say bag lining is used most often in things, but I'll take that over to the machine and go ahead and go all the way around the outside edge. And then again, I will have to clip my corners and curves before I can turn this right side out and press everything into place. I am finding myself a little bit down and tired in general here now that it is properly winter. Nice uh, 39 degrees outside today, not too bad here in Colorado, although some days have been down in the 20s and very, very chilly. I've had a couple of moments of snow here. Nothing, not snowy enough yet here uh, to actually do any of my ice dyeing experiments like I was doing last year. Um, you know, if you don't want to buy ice to do ice dyeing for tie dye, you can just wait for it to snow if you live in a place like Colorado but it hasn't snowed enough to like grab buckets of it and do ice dyeing experiments yet. So maybe when it does, I'll dye a few more scarves or things. I do have a few more blanks waiting around here in the studio that could become more ice dyed experiments like I was doing last year, but I do have several other projects brewing. So I'm not sure I'll get as much ice dyeing done this winter as I did last winter. And I am sorry to be sewing with a black fabric once again. I know it can be hard to see exactly what I'm doing. I promise if I turn the exposure up anymore, it just starts to look worse, honestly. So. Hopefully you can get the gist of what's going on enough, but uh, we all know what do I like to wear most? Black. So I try honestly not to make garments in fabrics and colors that I just know I won't reach for anymore. It's a sign of maturity that I just don't want to spend too much time and effort on things that in the end I end up pulling out of my closet to sell or to donate just because I don't usually reach for cheerful things. I, I want to be dark and brooding and mysterious. And seeing as my personality isn't very dark, brooding or mysterious, um, I have to do it with clothing, honestly. I'm just going to fold in all the little seam allowances of my extensions here where I had left this open in order to turn it right side out and just pin those into place. And I will just go ahead and hand stitch around all of this, slip stitch all of this shut, which is how I'm going to finish the sleeves off in a second as well, um, because I did leave the slits of my sleeves open as well. But I'm just giving my collar a nice press here. Again, that has already been top stitched. I was going to top stitch all the way around the hem and the like outside overlap edge of this, and then I just completely forgot. So there's that. Oops. But yes, I'm lining up the sleeve openings of my outside fabric and my lining here, and I'm going to slip stitch these shut, and then I'm going to apply a lot of hand sewn eyelets along this opening in the sleeve. Um, I think it's 13 per side, and then there's two sides per sleeve, so heck ton of a lot of eyelets to sew. <sighs> not my favorite task, honestly, not my favorite task. But I'm hemming my sleeves as I do this as well, just turning those up half inch. And again, I'll slip stitch all of this shut by hand. And then yes, I'll mark every inch along this sleeve opening here, starting about a half inch up from the hem on either side with some tailor's chalk and just hand sew eyelet after eyelet after eyelet after eyelet. I do actually have an eyelet cam for my Vintage Singer button holder, but you have to like poke a hole in the fabric, like you have to like punch a hole in the fabric to use that as opposed to using an awl to push the threads aside. So I prefer actually doing hand sewn eyelets to that. Uh, if I were using, if I were using like eyelets as an embroidery finish and not as a functional thing, I'd probably use the machine. But for this, I needed actual functional eyelets and for the strength, I wanted to use an awl and sew them by hand. And if you Google hand sewn eyelet, this is one of the images that comes up. And I did use this technique for all of my hand sewn eyelets along both of these sleeves. And I will link to the blog post this image comes from in the description below. And I did lace up my sleeves with some very thin black ribbon for now. Of course, this could be changed out for a contrasting color or different cording, depending on what effect I am after in the future. And I laced up both my sleeves that way. And then I have a lot of skirt hooks on this buddy to close everything else up. So my little extension here, hooks along the side seam on the opposite side to wrap closed in the front. This is the under side of my wrap along the front, like so. And then there's two ends for the other hooks that are on the other side of this. Wraps closed like so, like that. Those both hook. And at the top here, I actually am fastening this with a long cord that I made out of this same fabric that loops through to tie in a bow or a knot of some kind up here along the shoulder. And here is how the finished garment wraps closed. And here I am wearing it. And here is my finished black linen rayon blend wrap top 
I mean, I, I wanted this to be a top and, and, and a blouse kind of, but with this two layers of this linen, it's almost a lightweight jacket. So it's much more of a like late summer, fall jacket kind of a thing in the end, something that I'd probably throw over a lightweight blouse or t-shirt, as opposed to something I would wear all on its own just as a blouse because it is this heavier weight. I am still very happy with how this design came out. I'm very happy with the finishes and the result on this. It did take me a very long time to do all of those eyelets. I split it up over several days because after I do about four or five hand sewn eyelets, I'm already kind of tapping out. I'm, I'm done. Uh, I really don't like sewing them. Um, for some reason, it just bothers me. So it took me several days. You know, I kind of just did half a sleeve each day to get through that. But now that we're here, I really do like the lace up sleeves on this. So I'm glad I invested the time in it, though it was a lot. I hope you enjoyed seeing how this project came together today. And thank you as always for watching. I'll be back with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.